The Storm This Time is an excerpt from a longer piece that David Helvark published uh, in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, which devastated uh, New Orleans. Some things that are interesting about it is, one, uh, David Helvarg has a long history of discussing uh, environmental issues, issues related to corporations, stuff like this. And in this piece, he takes us through the devastated city of New Orleans in an effort to demonstrate for us just how terrible uh, ecological devastation can be, especially when it uh, goes along with the types of effects that mankind can cause. Uh, one thing that's interesting about this piece is just how specific he gets in his details. It'd be one thing if he were just, you know, saying, oh, New Orleans was destroyed by a hurricane and that's really all there is to it. But instead of doing that, he goes into really crisp uh, details, gives you a lot of images. And this sort of description is what makes the piece resonate. Uh, a few examples. Uh, is he actually says, I begin to see box stores, warehouses, and motels with their roofs ripped off or caved in, downed trees or broken street signs, house roofs covered in blue tarps and high rises with glass windows popped out like broken eyes. Especially that last part there, glass windows popped out like broken eyes. Uh, he uses metaphor there to make the scene come alive. Uh, another example, a little later on in the essay, is he says, uh, an antebellum white mansion in the water, along with a floating pickup, a larger truck hanging off a tree, a semi-trailer cab under the bottom of an uplifted house, a speedboat through a picture window, the Burris water tower collapsed next to a wrecked store, shrimp boats on the levee on the road and in the bushes with military patrols passing by. Uh, he doesn't just say that things are messed up. He gives us specific examples, right? Like a semi-trailer cab under the bottom of an uplifted house. And it's this specificity uh, which ends up making giving the piece more resonance. Uh, he also has these sort of details even when he's dealing with other people, uh, such as when he's talking to an individual whose home was uprooted. Uh, he says, I had a collection of Jazz Fest t-shirts going back to 79, but they're gone. He's wearing a mask, rubber boots, and gloves, but still manages to give an expressive shrug of resignation when I take his picture. Uh, so he uses dialogue uh, also to add to the descriptive nature of the piece, and I uh, tries to go into some specific details about the, the Jazz Fest t-shirts. That sort of quote that the guy gave him lends to what makes the piece dynamic. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the description in this is that it's not vague, it's not abstract, it is very specific, and it uses all of the senses, not just sight. Uh, it also uses smell. Uh, he says, I'm confronted with an equally noxious odor. It's what I come to think of as the smell of a dead city, like dried cow pies and mold with a stinging chemical aftertaste. Um, and he refers later into uh, trying not to breathe too deeply, these sort of things, because those sort of sensory details are what make uh, this piece come alive and are part of what demonstrates it as a well-written example. Uh, one last thing I want to point out for this piece that's interesting is how despite all of this description, uh, at the end of the piece, when he does turn it towards not just, we're not just watching uh, New Orleans be destroyed here, we're not just seeing that, we're not just seeing a destroyed city and sort of rubbernecking at it as if we're just uh, driving by in cars staring at an accident. Uh, he does tie it to argument as well. A lot of times in the piece, the argument, what he's actually trying to uh, prove, what he's trying to persuade you of, is a little bit submerged. Uh, but towards the end of the piece, it does come out a lot more clearly. He says, What we know we are going to have are more environmental disasters like the hurricane season of 05 linked to fossil fuel-fired climate change and bad coastal policies driven by saltwater special interest. Uh, there are practical solutions to the dangers we confront along with models of how to live safely by the sea. So what he's doing here is that he's, after building this entire architecture of uh, destruction that he's shown us and all of the physical costs and emotional costs of that destruction, he ties it back into an argument as to what we can do. Uh, rely less on fossil fuels. Uh, be more responsible in the way that we live around the ocean. Recognize that the types of things that we do have an effect on the environment around us. And these are the types of things where he used that description to make his point come through.